people have been wanting to see it i am finally going to start doing it working on getting this 880 running again i do believe the last time it ran under its own power was probably uh right after i got married so it's been over 20 years but it's always been inside so that should be on its its side so i'm going to first uh drain out whatever substance is in the gas tank hopefully that even flows and may have to just pull the gas tank and clean it out and i'm betting i'm probably gonna have to tear that carburetor apart it really needs a at least an exhaust manifold um oh you can i don't know what you can see there someone's got a washer welded onto that port So I think first thing I'll do is get sheet metal off on this side and then see what comes out of the uh, line going to the carburetor. Well, there is liquid in the tank. Let's see if thing, anything comes out when I turn the, if I can turn the gas on. Oh my. Ew. Yeah, that does not want to budge. Well, it took a pair of pliers to even get the sediment bowl to open. And of course, nothing came through. So I think the best thing is going to be to just pull that tank and clean it up. And probably pull the carburetor while I'm at it. Let's see if this engine... Oh, yeah. She's still free. That's backwards, but turns without too much effort. So uh, I'm gonna, you know, obviously uh, that part's in my favor. Time for the tank to come out. Yeah, it looks pretty, uh, pretty nasty in there. We'll give it the treatment. Well, with the hood off, the gas tank all the way, you can see where uh, someone did their own modification. You compare it to the other ports. It should not have that big old washer welded on it. But we're going to do that, run with that for now, just uh, get it running before I start throwing money at it too hard. Let's go uh, get the tank cleaned up and the carburetor. Uh, first thing I want to do is get this sediment bowl out. I usually keep a new one around, but uh, is that like a coin? or a, No, it's a flat washer underneath there. But I think I'm out of new ones. I'll look, but I'm probably going to have to try to resurrect this one. Ew. Yeah, nothing was going through that. In case you're wondering, this is uh, this hole that the sediment bowl goes into is 3 8 pipe thread. So if you want to try to clean those threads or cap it off like I'm doing here, that's what you need. Here's my anode, just an old piece of shelving, sacrificial metal. I've got electrical tape wrapped on the bottom end so it doesn't touch the tank because we don't want a dead short. And then again up here where it's going to touch the neck, it just barely fits in. I think that's gonna work. Now to see if we make sparks fly. Got my positive on my anode and my negative on the tank. Oh my, so many things to plug in. Uh, let's start out with low 12 volts and see what the well, it ain't got a dead short because it didn't jump right up to full. Yeah, 
Yeah, getting about 10 amps there. Don't have a lot of surface area with that shelving support, so I could add lye to get the conductivity up. I actually pulled this uh, water out of my electrolysis tank. It's getting pretty dirty in there. Stuff's still working. I was testing uh, the sending unit and getting erratic readings, so I think it's probably junk. Oh, things are starting to happen already. Yeah, we'll let her go overnight and wash it out tomorrow and see how it looks. Well, let's see how the carburetor is. One thing, if you're not terribly familiar with setting them and everything, is uh, if they're turning freely, this is the idle jet, is to count, turn it all the way in and count how many, and then when you put it back together, do the same thing. So half a turn, one turn, one and a half, two turns, two and a half, about two and a half turns in. We'll do the same with the load screw. This is a Zenith carburetor. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, about three and a quarter turns. Doesn't matter because I do believe this whole style, this style of them, come the whole thing come should come out. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of crusty. You want to be careful about trying to clean these things. You wire brush them, and you can alter the tip, and then they won't just won't work the same again. So the best thing is a carb cleaner, brake cleaner. If it's bad enough, you might just have to replace it. Oh man, that one's uh That one's tight. On this one, the screws got a 5/16 head. So I was able to break it loose with the end wrench and then go back to using a screwdriver. Now, get the two halves separated. There it goes. Of course, it destroyed the gasket by the looks. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hard on it. Hopefully I've got one. But yeah, look at all that rusty crust. Down on the bottom of there, that was not going to work good. Take the float out, the pin that it pivots on just slides out. It can't come out once uh, everything's together. And then the seat. That looks pretty clean. That is good. I gotta say, I haven't worked on too many Zenith carburetors. Get this nozzle out of here. Yeah, that's a little dirty. Looks like there's a screw with a orifice in it there. One there. Probably as long as I can blow air through them, I'm not gonna try to pull them out. Because if they break strip or something then i'm really in a pickle so time for some press compressed air there's another seat or another uh, orifice down in there and it's supposed to thread out. It's not wanting to turn out easy. So once again, I'm, I can blow air through it. I'm gonna leave it alone. Pieces and parts soaking. Sediment bowl taken apart, cleaned up pretty good. Got the 
carburetor soaking. And this is working. Oh yeah, look at that. The scum is coming out. Ooh. Here it is the next day. Probably been, I don't know, about 15, 16 hours. I got a little time to kill while the dew's burning off before I run wheat. Maybe I should try power washing it out and see how clean it is. There's what the anode looks like after being in there. Definitely something's happened. Let's see what we've got now. It's looking a lot better. I think I can live with that. Well, I've got everything cleaned up. I guess good enough for now anyways. Try to get her to run, that kind of thing. So we're gonna see about putting her back together. We've got all air going through all the passages. You wanna resist the urge to uh, run a drill bit through any of these, because those passage sizes are precision. And if you open them up just a little bit more than regular, it's gonna throw everything off and your carb just won't work like it's supposed to. So there's the load jet. I'll put the load adjusting screw in the bottom. This one does have some corrosion on it, but we're going to let her ride for now and see how that tractor runs before we start throwing too much money at it. Should be able to get it adjusted halfway decent. Who knows, I might have one around. I did have the gasket. Especially if you flip it over and put it on the right way. Then it, then all the holes line up. That's what one of those, I think it's Viton, but rubberized tip. And I suppose I should check the float height. I have to get a book out for that. I've never, I can't say I've ever uh, messed with a Zenith carburetor. I don't dope up the gaskets for carburetors because it seems like I'm taking them back apart <laughs> occasionally when gaskets bad. The well, book says a quarter inch so I just take a quarter inch Allen wrench and set in there and boy this one's off by quite a bit. Yeah that's definitely a quarter inch. Just touching. Let's get the idle screw. And this one will. I know I said to turn it in, count the number of turns to the bottom, and then. But boy, this one just really seemed off. And after seeing where the float was and. Other things, um, I traditionally go with one and a half turns. Let's see, so there is half, one, one and a half. And I go about two and a half on the uh, load screw as a roof. Gets you started. Most likely it'll need tweaked after that, but. So half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. There, that should already be ready to go back on. The uh, fuel uh, sending unit cleaned up halfway decent from the electrolysis process. This might be an original, it's got a cork uh, float. Or someone just shoved a piece of cork on there. I can't say I've ever seen one with a cork before. 
I might get the ohm meter and check it real quick. It's still going to go back in for now because don't need an opening in the gas tank. Yeah, she's no good. The resistance doesn't change at all. But it'll keep the gas in. I think I'll finish tightening it down once I get it in the tractor because I don't remember which way it was facing. Now to undo some of the damage I've done, give it its coil back. Hopefully I didn't hide the bolts for myself. Okay, we have a coil again. Now let's put on a starter. I'm not sure where this starter is, but I've got the one from the 1600, which is currently in for restoration. It'll work for now. Now it has a starter. I think we're just to checking fluids. I checked the engine, the hydraulic, the engine's fine. Looks like it got an oil change before it was parked. Um, hydraulic is low. Power steering is low. And uh, I'll have to check the radiator. Well, I needed some. It's over the core, top of the core now. So, where are we at? I think before I even put gas in it, I will crank it over. So, I need to put some hydraulic oil in the hydraulic unit so I ain't running that dry. And then grab a battery and see if uh, valves are sticking or anything crazy. I should probably just pull the valve cover. That's just crazy talk, ain't it? Well, here we are. No gas, but we're ready to crank it over. Nothing. Oop. Now we have power. Probably the points are corroded. Yeah, the points are at least moving. Hmm. Is that a bad coil? Is that the one I took off the 660? It just might be. I'll get the point file, clean them up. If I can't get it to spark, then I will find another coil. Because I think this one might be junk the more I think about it. I guess I just need to throw those things away. about 20 thousandths where'd you go rotor there you are probably won't work without that <laughs> I 
Yeah, I bet that's that bad coil I took off the 660. So I need to get a new coil. So I got thinking, the 1600 could make a donation. I'll put the new coil on it since it's getting restored. And this one can live here. Still nothing. Well, I know that's a good coil because 1600 ran with it. And I checked with the multimeter and I was getting 12 volts to the coil. Underside of the cap looks really good. No sign of corrosion. Suppose it could be the condenser. Like I said, it, well, it wasn't running the best when I drove it last 20 some years ago. So maybe the condenser was going bad at that point. I've got one of those around. I guess it's worth a try. Well, I just did a test. Uh, thought, well, maybe the key switch ain't sending power when it's cranking, but it's still getting about nine and a half volts at cranking speed. So not quite 12, but should make her pop. <clears throat> so I guess I'll change out that doohickey. pretty darn close it's definitely opening that should be enough to make smart spark of some kind the advance seems to be loose not that that would keep it from sparking just keep it from sparking at the right time I'm not getting that I'm thinking I might not have filed those points good enough the reading I was getting there all right there we go just needed a better cleaning I guess it's got a new uh, Duma Hasser uh, condenser don't want to forget this baby Let's see it's facing that way Let's see if we get some spark. <laughs> Nothing. What in the wor wild, wild world of sports is going on here? <laughs> okay, we'll clean it again. I might have to really break down and just put a set of points in it. These don't look bad. Other than... Let's try it again. And again. And again. That's looking better. One more time for good luck, then we'll put it back together. All right, try her again. Yeah. Now 
now we got a nice hot one. Hopefully you can see that. Excellent. Now we need gas. Okay, it's the moment of truth. There is gas in it. I turned the gas on long enough to fill the carburetor. Turned the gas back off. Um, that way, I guess if it's running crazy, it'll run out of gas. That and the carb won't overflow if it's not seating good. And just get it started. And I guess I'll turn the gas on from there if it seems like it's running all right. Try giving it a little throttle too, that might make a difference.
Gonna have to get a water pump. It was gushing right out of there when it was running. It's not so bad at the moment. Well, it's bad enough. But it runs. I guess I better put some kind of bucket under there. Now well, let's see what's going on under here. Smoke. Well, it was getting oil up top. That was good. But right there, that push rod is, that valve probably stuck. Well, here's what happens when you throw caution to the wind and don't pull open the valve cover. One stuck valve. That should be imp simple enough to fix. I'm using my phone now because both the GoPros are dead. But here's this the bent valve, or not the bent valve, the stuck valve. See how well you can see it. But the push rod popped out of place and now she's bent. Watch it in the hole there as I hold the thing down. It it orbits around. I've got another push rod, but now I gotta pull the whole valve train up just to switch that one push rod. So see. Well, I have to have the choke out for it to get enough gas to run. Of course, you can hear that terrible exhaust manifold right there. I push the choke in just a little bit and she dies. It's interesting. Like she's not getting enough gas. And I adjusted that float up, which should make the gas level go higher. So I don't think that would be the problem. Well, that's with a choke most of the way out. Doesn't seem like it matters where I adjust the carburetor. I'm wondering, uh, for as bad as this manifold is, if uh, I've got some kind of intake leak. Seems to be running nice, right? Blah, 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 blah. Seems to be running nice now. As long as that choke is almost all the way out. There doesn't seem to be much of any blow by coming up through the push rod holes. There's definitely a hole in the manifold there. Getting a little bit of smoke. Of course, it chokes most of the way out. And the rings are probably sticky. Well, now I should probably do the ultimate test and see if it'll move under its own power. Or maybe I should leave well enough alone.
Well, it seems like it runs well enough to uh, invest in a manifold. I think I'll invest in both. And uh, maybe there's a rusted through hole in the heat exchanger area. Maybe one of the intake manifold gaskets. Definitely an exhaust manifold is shot. Let's see if it's uh no hot water is going through the hose like that's hot. Coolant circulating. I'm making a mess because the water pumps leak in. Valve covers off, so I'm getting a little bit of drippage out the back. Still, I think we'll call that a success. It has been almost 23 years since this ran, and it definitely didn't run this good that time. Run for a little ways and die. Run for a little ways and die. It's hard to keep running right. I put it in the barn and never messed with it since. I moved it around. It used to be in a different barn, but... So there we go. Will it run? Yes. Will it run better? Hopefully. Well, I went digging through my stash of stuff and I found this manifold set. Not exactly new, but a lot better than what I'm working with. It was off a 1650. And in the case of this one, it was had a mounted corn picker on it and caught fire, I'm sure well before my time. Um, but anyways, it is, the newer version it will work on this 880 but one thing they did was add this rib along the top here I'll flip over one of the things they did was add this rib across the top because after years of use the middle gets the hottest because that's where the most exhaust is going through and that manifold would kind of warp and it tended to go down and so these ridges help reinforce it help counteract that so this is the 161 707a exhaust manifold and intake i do have a brand new old stock intake manifold but i do not have an exhaust i can almost see some warp in this one it almost looks like it bows in here some of this stuff just doesn't come across well on video but I shouldn't take too much to swap this baby out. Just drop the carburetor down. Um, I'll have to transfer the plug out of there because um, since that was a 1650, I meant it had a Holley carburetor, which means it also had vacuum advance. And looks like the water pump stopped leaking. That means it's either out of water or there was just a piece of crud in there on the seal that worked its way out. And let's just climb up there. I still see water over the top of the core. Cool. Sometimes a guy gets lucky. So we'll start tearing down and uh, see if we can't swap this manifold and try it out. Yeah, there's what you want to see. Broken off stud. Which considering there, I'm guessing that's why they drilled this hole in their homemade flange thing here. 
Not sure what their goals were. The intake manifolds. Boy, that one was just clearing. It might have been sucking air in there. That one looks good. Centered up pretty good. That one was close up there. Yeah, I don't see where intake air was getting, or air was getting sucked in. Although, did I forget to put the gasket on the intake for the carburetor? That may have been my problem. Oh my God. Nope, it's on the carburetor. Well, so much for simple solutions by stupid people. I would have taken that one. Hmm. Well, there probably ain't any better time to get that, try to drill that out of there than now. Well, just eyeballing it. It doesn't look too bad. This port definitely looks better than before. Before it was up high. And so was this one. They look all right front to back. I think this is definitely gonna be better in that sense. All right, next step. I'm gonna try to drill that out. I got my handy dandy left hand. Left hand drill bit set. And for those that might be wondering why that makes a difference, the twist is in the opposite direction of your typical right hand drill bit. And if you're lucky, the drill bit bites into the bolt and runs it back out. And uh, whereas if you're turning right hand, you're turning the same direction as the threads. And so you can actually, it can lock into that bolt and drive it down in tighter. So I'm going to start with uh, something just a little oversized to try to uh, get a, because you know, of course they never break off flush. Something that'll kind of catch the head and I'll get a little bit of the head, but maybe I can make a center there because it's pretty uneven. I don't think I can do very good with a center punch. Well, I don't know if I did good or bad there, but I did something. Let's go smaller now. Man, I don't either have that chucked up good or it's bent. That bit's bent. I must have gotten to this one too. It's dull. I'm consistent. This one doesn't look like it's ever been used. So here's its chance to break. Ow. Look at that bow. It's drilling though. <laughs> we are through. Okay. Let's see if that hole's even big enough to make the easy out do its thing. Close. Come on. 
Don't need a broken easy out in there. I may have to drill it all the way out and go with a Healy coil. All right. Woo! Spice grip. Oh, I should have left that on there and gone the other way. So I could take it out. I'm going to drill it up a little bit bigger. Sorry, I keep blocking the light. And hope that the next drill bit bites. A little more likely to catch and bite when you got a hole already. Hey, this is the bent one. Well, there ain't a lot in there. Come on. Nothing. All right, 930 seconds. Partially just because I don't think I've ever used this one before, so it's got good sharp. Try to make sure I'm parallel to the other stud. drill bit off. Who needs a 930 seconds drill bit anyways? Ooh, shouldn't hit that. I think it's trying to come out though. Let's reverse it. Oh yeah, well I'm way off center though. Yeah, I was definitely off center and it has definitely turned. Maybe, just maybe, I can get a punch and spin it out now. Well, of course, you know, I moved the camera out of the way so it can work, and that's when it comes out. Actually took the drill bit and kept working at it, and it would grab it and slowly turn it out. I'm going to go grab a tap and clean those threads up and see if there's enough to hold a stud. Yeah, I definitely didn't do it any favors. Yeah. I'll run a bolt down in there and see how solid it seems, but it might get a Healy coil before it's all done. Hey, it's feeling pretty solid once you get down in there some. I think we might have something we can work with. coolant didn't come pouring out so you know I didn't get all the way through to the jacket that's a bu uh, bonus I think that's the bottom not the prettiest work I've ever done but I think it's gonna be effective this is just a regular 3 8 bolt I just want something I can thread down in there and I should probably just blow that out. There's probably all sorts of crud in there. Let me get the air gun.
I think that's going to work. Get her down in there good where there's good threads down in there. It seems pretty solid there. Even if I back it off, I a little wiggle to it. But... I think we can go. I think I get her seated down in there and then uh, tighten the nut on. I think it will be viable. We're going to try it anyways. All right. So I need to find a stud. And I need to, the biggest thing, I'm pretty sure I got the stud, the clamp is going to be the challenge. Now looky here. 770 takes the same size bracket. I need this one back here. I've got a 77 I've parted out, so it should be the same. I checked the Super 77. I guess I got a 77 right over here. Duh. Yeah, that looks the same. Awesome sauce. Now I just have to do the old uh, parts dive. See if I can't find them. I know where they're at. It's just exactly where they're at. Oh yeah. I thought all these, uh, I thought we'd taken this manifold off this head. So, not only do I have the clamp, but I've got an oversized Five. I also have an oversized fine threaded 3 8 nut to keep it all original. If I don't lose it. So, stud. I think that's going to work. I just double nutted it to uh, get it turned in there good. I think that's gonna work. Uh, then I forgot to grab the scraper to clean up those surfaces. Well, I guess I'll do that. I've scraped all the port openings. They're smoother, smooth as they're gonna get. Put some uh, new gaskets on the manifold. I'll only uh, dope up the intake ones. The exhaust, uh, the dope would burn off and, well, the whole thing's kind of designed to be able to move around some for hit expansion and contraction. So uh, they don't need to be glued down anyways. Now here's where things stand. I need to get a pipe plug for that hole. And I forgot to grab the battery out of the other barn. And it's pouring rain. Well, it slowed up some. It was coming down pretty heavy, which we need it. I'm saying possibility is severe. So uh, right at this moment, I'll take that. <laughs> nice and cool. Well, the rain went up, got a plug in there, got a battery, carburetor's hooked up. I have a feeling that the, now the way the old manifold looked that 
I don't know if I was necessarily getting air in as much as probably there's still some crud or something in the carburetor keeping the fuel from flowing properly, but we'll give it a try before I go to the next plan. So we'll turn the gas back on, see if we can't fire her up. Still the same problem. Won't run unless uh, the choke's out. So I'm thinking there's still something going on in that carburetor. So let's go to plan B. It's pouring again. So what I'm gonna do is take off this Zenith carb and transplant on the Marvel carb from the 1600 that I'm restoring. Kind of as a test thing. But it was working good on the 1600, especially for an engine with broken rings and piston ring lands. And so let's do that. Marvel is in place. It's got a quarter inch fuel hose in there to jump across. Um, I'm sure it's not going to rev up full the way. This is just more of a proof of concept, see what's going wrong type of thing. But anyways, the uh, throttle arm here is a little uh, farther to back or forward. I, it's just clocked just slightly different on the Zenith versus the uh, Marvel. I'm sure I could make it work by adjusting the length of the uh, turnbuckle there, but I'm not going to go into that because it's adjusted right for this. And hopefully I can get this Zenith cleaned up and working good to where I can put it back on because the 1600 is going to need its carburetor. Let's turn the gas on and see what happens. like it's loading up just a little bit. Uh-oh. Did it possibly run out of gas? It was doing so well. I didn't put much in there.
you believe that's the most I've ever seen it run. And it is the first it's, well, this whole experience has been the first it's run in 23 years now. First time it's moved under its own power in 23 years. I guess I saw it run that long when I put it back in the barn. But I've never used it in the field. Must have been out of gas, put a little in there and she seems to be better now. That's moving her out a little bit. Yeah, it's still raining a little bit out there. I don't really want it to suddenly uh, stall and die on me in the great outdoors with it raining. There she's moving out. I guess there's my proof of concept. The Zenith carburetor still needs uh, some work on it. But now I can drive it into the workshop where tools are easier to get to. I can change out that, need to change out that push rod. That valve's gonna be loose with a bent push rod. It's working good enough to keep it firing on all five at the moment. Oh, well, let's see how well the hydraulics. Oh yeah, the relief flows. They sound solid. There we go. One running 880. I know several of you have been asking for it. picking back up. I better pull it back in. go. Thank you everybody for watching.